Mm -hmm. Hello, 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 my Instagram family. Those of you, when I finally load this to YouTube or on Facebook, blessings to you. Tanika Maria here, and it is almost Thanksgiving, you guys. I haven't done a video in a while, and I wanted to come out here, share some nuggets from my book, A Woman's Journey Home, 14 Keys to Ascending to the Next Dimension. And on today, this afternoon, I'm going to be sharing tips on dealing with unfinished business and loose ends. And this is directly from chapter eight of this book. If you want to grab this on Black Friday, but chapter eight out of a woman's journey home on the spirit of completion. And, you know, we got to learn as we come to the end of the year. We don't want to have a lot of loose ends and unfinished business. And there's no way that we could all be perfect in this, but we have to start addressing it. And so I'm going to share real quick, briefly out of this book on just some quick tips on, hey there, Ariel, hey there, um, on how to deal with unfinished business, loose ends, lack of private order, all of the things that we have to deal with that's going to keep us from really crossing over into 2022 the way we want to. That we're talking about that paperwork that you need to finish. Hey there. We're talking about all of this lingering little loose ends and little messy stuff that it creates drag. It creates resistance. It kind of slows you down and it's a distraction, right? So whenever we have a lot of loose ends and unfinished relationship business, just general mess in our lives that we're not cleaning up and dealing with, where we're not making completions, we're not completing this thing. I'm completing this situation. I'm transitioning to the next thing and it's still lurking out there there. You know, you should have turned in that paperwork. You know, you should have done all of that stops you from really flowing into what God would have you to do. And this is coming from chapter eight of my book, A Woman's Journey Home. And I'll just read a little bit and I want you guys to catch what I'm saying. As long as we have these things, these, this stuff left hanging in our lives. Hey there, blessings to you. Hey there, Dana. As long as we have loose ends, unfinished business, things left hanging, lingering, long-standing, unresolved issues, paperwork undone, lack of private order. As long as we got that floating in our lives, there will always be a level of drag. And the more you try to do God's purpose, the, more, the busier you become, you're trying to do stuff, get things done, the more you're going to generate more loose ends and more unfinished business. Because see, we're moving so fast trying to get stuff done that we don't have time to clean up emotionally, spiritually, and mentally behind ourselves as we go on to the next thing. And sometimes we're moving so fast that we don't take that time for transitions to clean up as we go. How many of you know that when you're, you're moving from thing to thing, you're busy, you're getting stuff done, that your house gets messy. Is it just me? If I'm in and out, busting in the streets, getting, going to the store, going here, going there, I'm running here and I'm at work and I'm going to do this and I'm here at this event, and I'm doing this. I'm not cleaning up behind myself. As it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit, right? Facts. Facts, right? And let me read. I'm going to read straight from my book, A Woman's Journey Home. This is what I'm writing here. I'll be the first to raise my hand. I'm the one that typically moves so fast that I don't have time to clean as I go. I get tired. Things pile up and never get fully resolved. If I am not careful, everything will eventually come to a head and crash at the most inopportune time. The funny thing is, I am aware of it, but I'm too tired to get it done. How many of you can relate? Put your, give me some hearts. Give me some emojis if you've been in that place, right? Let me know, right? I hear you. I hear you, Dana. I hear you. And this is, this, that is another key part as well. Maintaining your strength and stamina to clean and order your life as you move in God's purpose. Without the fatigue, it's critical. So it's like you need the strength, the physical strength and stamina to clean up behind yourself as you're doing what God called you to do. And I'm not talking about just the natural. I'm talking about all areas of life. And see, let me move on along because I don't want to keep you guys long. I know it's Thanksgiving Eve, but on the opposite end of the spectrum are those people who never move at all. They know they got unfinished business. They know they got loose ends. They know they got stuff that's messy that they need. They got to do this paperwork. They got this lingering situation that needs to be dealt with. 
and they get stuck in fear and procrastination. They get stuck in powerlessness, powerlessness, fear, and shame. I've been in that place too. Now that is a lot more uncomfortable for me and I'll take, I'll try to do something right. But the opposite end of the people, the people that are moving so fast that they're not cleaning up stuff. And then the people that are so slow and they know they got mess to deal with, but they get stuck in shame and fear and they just stay there. But even, even here, you know, if you can just do baby steps, just needlepoint things to get things in a little bit more order, you'll be better off, right? And so the key to all of this is activating the spirit of completion, the spirit of completion. And so what that what does that mean? So listen, listen at this, listen at this and hear me well. And again, I'm reading from chapter eight of this book. When we fail to bring situations, events, physical things such as paperwork and loose ends to completion, it is a representation of still hanging on to the past. Get you some of that, right? Every time I have a bunch of loose ends and mess that I haven't dealt with in my life, even if it's simple stuff, it's, uh, it's sitting in the back of my mind, it's lingering around in my life. It is a re All of that unfinished business and loose ends and stuff hanging is a representation of still hanging on to the past. Come on, right? It is a representation of old things from an old season that we're dragging into the present season because it is still in complete business. Mm -mm. Come on, come on. This includes relationships that need to end or need to have some type of closure. You may never get that closure, but you have to make your own closure. And basically, this is a quote, and this is a quote that I love. You can't bring old thoughts into a new season. And every time I have loose ends, every time I have this unfinished business, it is a representation of bringing old thoughts into a new season. But the spirit of completion is it's a, it's not so much as a spirit, but it's a rhythm. It's, it's when we finish what we start, right? And see, when, think about how you feel when you finish what you start. Every time you finish that God idea, every time you finish that project, every time you finish that business, do, do that business or step out into that ministry assignment, every time you start it and then don't finish it, it chips away at your self-esteem. Every, everybody, every time you start something and then leave it hanging there, it like, it, take, it takes a hit. You take a hit in your confidence. Come on. I know the feeling. Whenever you don't, bring stuff to completion. You start it, but you don't finish it. It diminishes your trust in yourself. This is very important. Listen to this. I'm going to read from my book here. Every, yes, you can't bring old wine into new wine skin. Mm -hmm. Every time you start something, a God idea, project, plan, but don't bring it to completion, it chips away at your self-esteem. There's nothing worse than, than breaking a promise to yourself. You promised yourself you were going to get that thing done. You promised yourself you were going to start that. You promised yourself you were going to apply to this thing and do that thing and set up this and do that. But we honor ourselves and we honor God when we, with the help of the Holy Spirit, bring things, things through to completion. There's a big difference between those who start many projects with great excitement and gung-ho and gusto than those who actually finish, right? And so it takes the faith, it takes focus, it takes diligence, it takes de delayed gratification, right? To actually bring stuff to completion. And see, you know, you don't want to be that professional starter, that person that's always starting something. They have 49 ideas, 49 different things that they want to do, and they still never bring anything to completion. There's only, it's estimated that only 2% of people in the population actually finish what they start. 2%. 2%. It is estimated that roughly 2% of people actually finish what they start. And these 2% people say, I want to be in that 2%. I want to be in that 2%. These 2%, 
they tend to operate at a different elevation or a different level or atmosphere than those of us who tend to be professional starters or professional procrastinators because we're stuck with all of the unfinished business. We're stuck in all of our loose ends, right? You don't want to be there. Say, I don't want to be there. And when we're driven to, to distraction because we have so many loose ends and so much stuff hanging out there that we have started and we haven't finished it, then we're, we're unable to complete. And the key to operating in that consistency is to look at the root cause, which is fear. When we unpeel it and when we unpack it, it's fear. It's fear. The fear of what they think. The fear of what people are going to think about your business, your idea, your project. Fear about get going out here being live on social media. Fear of this, fear of that. Fear of the criticism of what other, you know, the criticism and the critical thoughts. Because if you're suffering from vain imaginations and stories, then you want to make up all kinds of vain imaginations, all kinds of stories in your head about why people don't like your stuff, why people are not buying your stuff, why you can't do it. And you'll be a professional starter and you won't finish anything. And again, that every time we do that, it chips away at our confidence. It chips away at our self-esteem. And so the big question that you need to ask yourself, that's right, Aria, you will be in that 2% and you will finish what you start in Jesus' name. Amen. And the big thing that you want to ask yourself is not, not worrying about what they're going to think about you. They, your friends, your family, your colleagues at work, the people at church, your friends on social media, what they think. The key opinion that you need to worry about is what you think about yourself and what God thinks. At the end of the day, those are the only two opinions that matter. What do I think about Tanika? What does God think about me? Why am I worried about what they think? Come on, right? And remember, every time, like I keep repeatedly, repeatedly saying, every time you complete something, your self-esteem and your confidence will increase. Every time you finish what you start, your relationship with yourself grows stronger. Why does your relationship with yourself grow stronger every time you complete something, every time you tie up some unfinished business, every time you clean up some mess that's been lingering in your life, every time you deal with something instead of lingering it? Why does that increase your confidence? It increases your confidence because now you're able to trust yourself. Come on, let me read what I wrote in this book. Every time you finish what you start, your relationship with yourself grows stronger. Why? Because you have proven to be trustworthy within yourself. Think about it. How do you feel when someone repeatedly says that they're going to call you and they're going to text you, but they never do? That's so aggravating. Y'all already know as women, women, when we or, or men that may listen to this. But when someone says they're going to call you and text you and they keep saying it, but they, they don't. Do you trust them? Do you, do you, what does it feel like when someone promises that they're going to do X, Y, and Z, but you never hear from them? Now you take those same feelings and apply it to yourself. You make these sincere, repeated intentions and promises and New Year's resolutions and prayers and goals and fasting and praying and falling out and worshiping and all this kind of stuff, praying in tongues. And then you fail to show up for yourself. We're doing all this huffing and puffing and slobbing and spitting and falling out and crying and in rooms and Zooms and all of this stuff. And we fail to show up for ourselves. And if we can't trust ourselves to follow, to, to follow through on our incomplete business, if I can't trust myself to complete and finish what I start, how can I be trusted? And so if I can't be faithful for, with the little things for my own self-development, for my own growth, and for God's purposes and assignment in my life, then how can I trust other people, much less God? This goes deep. So this spirit of completion and deal with loose ends as we're coming into 2022, this stuff is deep, right? But if I become a consistent starter and a consistent finisher, my self-esteem is going to rise. My confidence is going to rise. I'm going to trust myself and I'll do bigger and greater things. So how many of you want to be in that 2%? How many of you want to have that spirit of completion as we come out of 2021 into 2022? Right? 
I highly encourage you to get before God, look look at your life, get a list, and like look at any unfinished business. And it don't, doesn't have to be big stuff. It can be little stuff, like something you were supposed to turn in, a phone call you were to make, some subscription that's drafting money out of your account every month, and you keep being too lazy to cancel it. And that's money that's down the drain that you could be using to do something in your business. It's, it could be $20 a month. That adds up, but because I'm lazy, because I don't feel like it, I'm losing money. Those kind of things, little small things, it, every time I do it, it's going to shift. Every time I do it, it's going to make me feel better. Every time I do it, I'm going to get a little bit more confident. This is what it takes to be a consistent starter and a consistent finisher. We're talking about the spirit of completion as we go into 2022. I encourage you to get rid of, look look at God, what, what kind of unfinished business do I have? Personal, private, business, ministry, in the house, in my body. What is it I need to take care of? What is it I'm supposed to be doing? And take inventory. Don't check out at the end of the year with everybody else, but check in with yourself and check in with God. So again, I want to wrap this up. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for supporting. And I encourage you. I was just reading straight from my book, A Woman's Journey Home, 14 Keys to Ascending to the Next Dimension. You can grab this for on Kindle for $2.99 and download it on your iPhone. You can get the paperback version on Amazon for only $8.88. And definitely over the Black Friday weekend, I'll try to, my best to come out here, share more nuggets and tips for my books. You can click the link in my bio uh, here on Instagram and also on YouTube or wherever else I post this. And definitely grab your copy so that you can follow. There's questions, there's prayers and activations in this book and read more about loose ends, unfinished business and how to walk in that spirit of completion. Blessings to you. Be sure to click the link in my bio. I look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great, wonderful, and blessed Thanksgiving. Take care.